ideas, life-changing thoughts, creativity. Worth, that's the value we put to them. Spreading, how do you spread an idea if not to languages and communication? So I'm here to talk today about crossroads where languages and creativity meet. The limits of my language mean the limits of my word. I speak four languages, and I always ask myself how to use these languages for more than asking for a plate of hummus, let's say, in Lebanon, my homeland, or finding a subway system in Tokyo, where I was lost, by the way, one time. I only knew what it meant to be African when I left Africa. That happened to me, too, except with being Lebanese. Being in the US, I experienced diversity firsthand. Through architecture, I experienced the life through material, texture, and light. But through languages, I experienced the communication happening between people. Roberto Boriano said, the world changed every 100 feet. Now I have a problem with that statement. 100 feet. I'm a metric girl. So let's say the world changed every 30 meters. But I still disagree with that, and I'm going to prove it. I'm going to ask every single one of you to spread your hand to the right and to the left. Do it now and forget there's a personal bubble. <laughs> it's a beautiful picture. I wish I could take it from here. But I'm going to say that the world changed every five, four feet, because every single one of us is a unique individual that's diverse even within. So for bigger questions like how to do social justice, peace world, you know, environmental justice, saving the planet. The question is, how do these diverse people make these things happen? My answer is simple. It's through small local actions. That's a picture taken in January uh, in an international youth leadership conference where I gave three workshops with Portland public school systems to high school kid children, 14 to 18, who have English as their second language. It was kind of hard, but I didn't need anything else other than a big map and some colorful pen. And the communication just like that started. So what is creativity? I don't have any exceptional story with, which to share with you, just small daily life stories. So that's a picture of my graduating class back in Lebanon. And if you're asking where I am, I'm this weird cardboard pale floating face. <laughs> Because I wasn't here, I was fulfilling my Fulbright here in the States. So this is how my friend, through imagination, celebrated that small event. Last summer, I collaborated with a teammate, Jackie Davis, another MRC student, and we won a competition to build a clinic in Haiti. We, we were trying to make it happen. We, 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 were, we were doing great results for fundraising, and we did a practicum for it. A long story short, we actually went to Haiti through a co collaboration with Portland State University. I didn't find another word than creativity. How do you describe a child who just made an airplane out of leftover bamboo construction sticks? Or a child who just did a kite out of a cardboard plate? Resourcefulness. That's a very lovely lady I met. She was giving me traveling advice to Haiti. And the, she did with her hand the shape of the island. That's resource, resourcefulness. And attitude, or what I would like to, to call the selfie incident. <laughs> I was in Japan, and this waiter was trying to communicate with me. He didn't speak English. I didn't speak Japanese. So I thought he's asking for a selfie with us. So I just like snapped the picture. He was just asking to, to help us take a picture of us. <laughs> and collaboration. French is my second language. Being Lebanese, Arabic is my first, and English is my third. So in Haiti, I spoke French to communicate with the community. But maybe a few hours within the, uh, the conversation, my translation skills were not needed anymore because a, a certain attitude of, of love and respect were there. And finally, curiosity. If you wonder what these are, these are names of my friends that I written on their arm in Arabic. And Arabic reads from right to left for those of you who don't know. Teaching languages in school might be great, but I say don't even bother before trying to teach critical thinking and compassion. Because if you know a language, that doesn't help. You can always use a translator, and this is maybe where the future is going. But compassion and critical thinking, these are important values to be taught. Living is learning, and learning is living. And if you need to remember that, I actually created this trick for you. The last three letters of our school's name, Oregon. 
When it comes to diversity, to language learning, to adventure, even if you're afraid, just G-O-N, go on now and do it. I'm going to leave you now with a uh, quote from Senator Fulbright, the founder of the Fulbright Scholarship, which I'm really grateful for. And we, we can see the value of empathy here. Thank you. <laughs>